service. Uh, we are happy to have the Archbishop with us. And after a long, long time of uh, absent in the church, we are back again. So for those who are with us in church and who are at home, Karibuni sana. I request that we stand and join together with the procession of him, come we that love the Lord. to this morning service we are happy to have you with us this morning and I want to believe that whether we are in church this morning or we are watching at home we will be blessed together hallelujah amen yes uh, we turn to our prayer books page three turn to our prayer books page three the Lord be with you and also with you we have come together the people of God drawn by his spirit longing for his word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in his love and be sent in his peace. We are heirs of the Father, joint heirs with the Son, renewed in the Spirit. Together we are one. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. So let us confess them to the Father as we take our seats together. It's on the screens. Eternal Father. God of our ancestors, before your power all things tremble. But through your Son we approach your throne. We have done wrong and neglect to do right. Our sins were heavy on our hearts. 
Lord, have mercy. Count them not against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness. Enlighten our hearts with the glory of Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The dead are alive. The lost are found. His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us together join the correct for 10th Sunday after Trinity. Correct for 10th Sunday after Trinity. Together, let thy merciful years, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I shall seek not so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, which is in giving that we receive. Pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who live in your houses. May we always be singing your praise. Praise the Lord. May the name of the Lord be praised. We stand to glorify the Lord. Together, glory to the Son who became the Son of Man. Glory to the Spirit. And the, Lord the Lord our God, God forever. forever. Hallelujah. We want to sing the Jubilate song as we get into a moment of praise. We just want to praise God for this far he has brought us. Ubali hu ni mungu ametufikisha. Bwana asifiwe. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Enter his courts with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I think we can do much better than that. Uh, Moses gave us the right key so that we can play and sing and praise the Lord uh, in this morning that he has given us. Moses, go on ahead. Let's clap our hands. I will enter, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. I will enter, I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Hallelujah! He has made me. Glad he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Akuna mungu kama wewe bana. Akuna mungu kama wewe bana. Wamilele, wamilele.
kama wewe Yesu Oh hakuna mungu kama wewe Bwana Wewe unaweza unaweza eh 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 unaweza eh oh adimisha eh 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 adimisha Let's give Jesus a mighty hand clap of praise. He deserves our praise. Hallelujah. And my hope is not built on nothing less. It's built on nothing less but Jesus Christ, our righteousness. And I'd like us to join in singing this hymn, uh, part of this hymn in Sohili, in saying, Chakutumaini Sina. Chak. Good. Go ahead, Moses. Hallelujah. Chakutumaini sina ila damu ya kebola sina wema wa kutosha dhambi zangu kuziosha kwake Yesu na simama ndiye mamba ni salama Mamba ni salama Die mamba ni salama Na damu ya kena sadaka Na tegelea daima Yote chini ya kisha Moko ziata nitosha na kwa Yesu na si mamba Die mamba ni salama Die mamba ni salama Die mamba ni salama Na njia yangu hiwendefu Yeye unipa wakogu Mawimbi ya kini piga Gubu za kendi zonanga Na kwa ke Yesu na si mama Die mama ni salama Die mama ni salama Die mamba ni salama Niki ito kumundi Roho ni nina amani Niki vi kwa haki yake Sina hofu mbeleza kena kwa Yesu na si mama na ndiye Mamba ni salama Ndiye mamba ni salama Ndiye mamba ni salama Haleluya, haleluya Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. As we stand, let us bring our supplication, our petition, our prayers unto the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we worship you, we adore you, we thank you so much for being our God and our Father. Gracious Father, we are so grateful that you are able to gather us again mm. after that long spell of our scatteredness. We have been worshipping not in a physical, interactive manner, but watching and streaming o o online. And today, Lord, we have begun a journey of coming together in the church, even when we are still few. 
Our prayer, O oh God, is that you'll continue to watch over us and guide and guard us, protecting us and giving us all that we require for good health, mentally, physically, and spiritually, that, Lord, we can be, be able to strive and grow to, to flourish and to praise, praise you and please you. Father, God is our prayer that as we come together to church again, your protective arm will surround us with the blood of Christ that has forgiven our sins. That, Lord, we are coming as a renewed people, a people called by your name. And now we want to ask you, O oh God, if there is anything we have done against you by word, in our thoughts, even in our actions, Lord, have mercy on us and pardon us. We seek you in earnest, O oh God, that as a people, as a community of believers, as a nation, as nations of the world, we are conscious that we have come short of your glory, but God in heaven is our prayer that you will continue to have mercy upon each one of us yes, and look at us with your tender eyes full of love and care. So, Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless us the more. And our prayer this morning, O oh God, is that you will watch over the face of this earth and get rid of coronavirus and bring back normalcy and give us back our lives, our relationships, our joy, our, our, our moments together, our, our ability to move and interact and do business and encourage one another. Our prayer, O oh God, is that the normal will come back and we shall be able to see our children back in school. We shall be able to see ourselves rising up from the ashes and you are going to give us the beauty you have always yearned us to have. So may your beauty be our daily presence. Now going forward, Lord, as we come back and gather in your sanctuaries, may this begin to be the end of coronavirus, oh God. Yes, as your church come together and worship you and stand before you, oh God, mm. we declare that the world will be healed of coronavirus Amen. and declare that, Lord, our environment will be a cleaner environment Amen. and declare that, Lord, with your presence, we shall never be the same again. Amen. Father God, we commit ourselves that as we begin and uh, continue in this our service, your presence will journey with each one of us and all those who will be watching us, that, Lord, you are going to bless us the more. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. We can take our seat. Truly, we can join together and say, You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha, Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you. Stand for the reading of the psalm. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 11. Psalm 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, Flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes the sons of men. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, his soul hates. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur, a scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. 
upright men will see his face. And this, and glory be to the Father, uh, to, the Son, to the Son, and, and to, the to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, the beginning is, is now, now, and ever shall, ever be. shall be. Amen. Amen. We can sit down for the first reading. Our first reading is taken from Nehemiah chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 11. Nehemiah 1, reading from verse 1 to 11. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They say to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his commands. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if you exiled people at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by, by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, and I'll be reading from verse 1 to 16. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1 through to 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and, and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and the Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. And that is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he has descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful schemes. 
And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third reading is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13 to 20. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13 to 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion, communion of sins, sins the, the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, sins the, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us see the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. As our Savior taught us, we go to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive give us our sins. sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We do the litany on page 14, item 21. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide our president and give him your wisdom and justice. May your ministers serve you faithfully. In the valley of the shadow of death, protect, protect us with your Lord and staff. staff. Like trees planted by the waterside, grant, grant us the fruit of the spirit. spirit. Send us out as the salt of the earth and, and the light, light of, of the world. world. May the earth be filled with your glory. As the waters cover the seas. Thank you. Today we are honored to have uh, His Grace, the Archbishop are the most liberal Dr. Jackson Olesa Pitt as our speaker as we mark the first Sunday we are reopening in the Diocese of All Saints Cathedral and uh, we are privileged that he is here with us and he is the one who is giving the sermon. We thank God for you, your grace, thank you for coming together with your chaplain. We welcome you. And to prepare our hearts to hear the word of God from his servant, we stand and join together him 151, for I'm building a people of power. For I'm 
unveiled in the people of power and the making of people of praise that will move through this land by my spirit and will glorify my precious name. Build your church, Lord, make us strong, Lord, join our hearts, Lord, through your Son. Make us one, Lord, in your body, in the kingdom of your Son. For our church, Lord, make us strong, Lord, Join our hearts, Lord, through your Son. Make us one, Lord, in your body, in your kingdom of your Son. For I'm building a people of power, and I'm making a people of praise. That will move through this land by my spirit and will glorify thy precious name. Build your church, Lord, make us strong, Lord, join our hearts, Lord, through your Son. Make us one, Lord, in your body, in the kingdom of your Son. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will build us up as your church, made as your body. For indeed and true, we are segments and parts of the body which you founded, your church. And Father, as we gather again here to worship you, and as our churches in our diocese gather today to worship, Lord, we pray that our supplications, our prayers will come to you and you look upon us with your merciful eye and hand that will grant us all that we require and need in these difficult moments. Father, may this moment we have to hear from you be a moment like no other. Speak to our hearts and our minds. Speak to us clearly through your Holy Spirit that, Lord, we can be able to be built up stronger, even to be able to steer through the storm that is ahead of us. And Father God, we pray that you'll use me as you will, and you'll make each word we speak a blessing to our souls. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please let us be seated. I take this moment to greet all of us. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. I take this opportunity uh, once again to thank the leadership of St. Francis Church, Venerable Joyce, uh, Vicar and Archdeacon, the clergy, the lay readers, you members, for going through this period courageously, and even for the preparation of this reopening, when we are able to gather a few of us not the usual way, but at least a few of us are able to gather as we progress gradually until we fill back our churches when the Lord deals with COVID-19 and enable the world to be free again to mingle and gather. It's our great thanks to all of us for prayers for each other. I know we have been ministering to one another through prayers, calling out and reaching out and hearing how we are getting on, we want to thank God. We want to thank God particularly for our families and we want to thank God for each one of you. So maintaining social distance, just turn to your neighbor and say, I praise God for you this morning. Yes, when we see each other again and uh, are happy and in uh, uh, good faces, 
although we cannot smile properly at each other because we have a broad smile of the, of the, of the mask, uh, but we can't see our normal smiles, at least the Lord is saying, uh, I've been with you, and he has indeed been with us, and we want to thank him the more. I bring greetings from my family. They are back in the village, uh, but some of us, me and uh, our daughters, are, are in the city. My wife and the sons are in the, buffer, in the village. I don't know how we separated that way, but uh, uh, that is uh, uh, the nature today. And uh, they all send greetings, and uh, they are not able to join us and be with us, but we thank God for each one of them. Now we are gathered again. Since March, um, the church has been scattered, social life has been interrupted, and completely disrupted. We have not been able to mingle as we used to. We have uh, adopted the new normal, but we have still been trying to reach out through online services, social media, and other forms of technology that God has given us at this point in time. But it's so refreshing to see our faces together, even when we are few. And uh, today I want us to share, mainly from the readings given to us, but particularly from Psalms chapter 11, verse 3, which says, when the foundations are shaken, what will the righteous do? When the foundations are shaken, what will the righteous do? In other translations, like the one we read, when the foundations are destroyed, when foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? So it is great joy to be gathered again uh, in this church and sanctuary after that long break. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a lot of disruption to the world. It has altered our way of life, socialization, our children are not in school. Economic activities have been disrupted. And even our mode of public worship, it has been shaken. And all those foundations of modern society has completely been shaken. It is during such a time that we are reminding ourselves of the words of Psalms 11 verse 3. When the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? In other translation, when the foundations are being destroyed, it is present continuous, being destroyed. In others, when the foundations are destroyed or are shaken, what will the righteous do? Psalms is written as a collection of poetry, prayers, praises, songs, and it's a collection spanning over a long period of time. It is written to provide poetry for expression of praise, worship, and confession to God. The majority of the Psalms were written by David, but others are attributed to Asaph, sons of Korah, and Solomon. Others are even attributed to Moses and the times of Moses, and others are anonymous. The original audience are the people of Israel. Major themes in the book of Psalms include uh, songs of praise to God as our creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Praise is a recognition, appreciating, and expressing God's greatness. God's power is another major theme. God is all-powerful and has always acts of right, uh, and he always acts at the right time. He is sovereign over every situation. God's power is shown by the way he reveals himself in creation, in history, and in his word. The other major theme is forgiveness. Many Psalms are intense prayer, asking God for forgiveness. God forgives us when we confess our sins and turn to him. Other themes in the book of Psalms include thankfulness. We are grateful to God for his personal concern, help, and mercy. Not only does he protect and guide us, he also forgives us, but his creation provides everything 
uh, through his creation, he provides everything we need. So God is our provider, giver, and sustainer, and we must thank him. And uh, a lot of psalms are expressions of hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving. Trust God is another theme. God is faithful and just. When we put our trust in him, he quietens our hearts. He gives us hope. And because he has been faithful throughout history, we can trust him the more in times of our trouble, such as what the world is going to through today, coronavirus pandemic or COVID-19 pandemic. Psalms 11 is a, a psalm of David. The theme of this psalm is God's rule provides stability in the midst of a panic. Because we can trust him, we can face our problems courageously and go through them marching with grace and honor because he is dependable. When the foundations are shaking, when the foundations are destroyed or being destroyed, we feel like running away or hiding and we must remember where to run to and hide. When we read the uh, portion of Psalm 11, immediately after the psalmist or David sang when the foundations are being shaken, what will the righteous do? The expectation is that he will lead us and tell us exactly what to do. But he doesn't connect with the next sentence because the next sentence is, he declares, when the foundations are being destroyed, the Lord is firmly on his throne. Meaning his throne is never shaken. It is our situation which is being shaken, but where the Lord sits is firm and stable, and therefore when the foundations are shaken, the righteous should turn to him who is unshaken. And therefore the first point I want to make is when the foundations are shaken, we are asked to run, not away, but to run to the Father who is seated firmly on the throne, whose foundations are not shaken. His throne is firmly on the throne. And then the next sentence is, he's watching over us. He's a God who has never forgotten his people. He has not ever forgotten us. He is watching over every situation and taking note of what is happening in our own situation. So when the foundations are shaken, what will the righteous do? The Bible is telling us we should run to the Father, turn our eyes and our attention to him. When going through difficulty, it is natural for us to want to, know, uh, to want to run away from the challenges. That is very natural. Even when things happen in your own home and it seems difficult, what normally people want to do is to run away from them. Men particularly will run away to the clubs and think without a drink they will forget it. But let me tell you, it is not a solution, it is not an answer. What will the righteous do is to turn to the Father who is unshaken and his throne is in a stable place. David seems to be speaking to those who are advising him to run from his enemies. David, faith contrasts dramatically with the fear of the advisors who tell him to flee. Faith in God keeps us from losing hope and help us to resist fear. David advisers were afraid because they saw only frightening circumstances and crumbling foundations. You know, David was singing this psalm when he was under threat. His advisers were telling him, please run away. It is time to hide from the adversaries. You must hide, you must run away, you must protect yourself by running away. And David says, when the foundations are shaken, the father who is seated on the throne is firm, and that's where I will run to. Not to the valleys and to the caves, I will run to him. When we are frightened, normally we seek solutions. Even from where we know there is no solution. People normally run to fellow men. When things are tough, we run to sorcerers. We run to uh, people called diviners. We, we run to palm readers. We run to people we think they, help, they can help us. Who, if you look at their own situation, they have not helped themselves. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> 
Actually, we run to people who are in bigger trouble than we are, thinking they have an answer. But with them, I think they are just looking at us sympathetically and say, I wish they know I am a mere mortal human being who cannot provide an answer. But they will try to define. They will try to cheat you. They will try to uh, give you wrong advices. And all that will come out of it is further destruction. David was comforted and optimistic because he knew God was greater than anything his enemies could bring against him. When the foundations are shaking and you wish you could hide, remember that God is still in control. His power is not diminishing. By any turn of events, nothing happens without his knowledge and permission. When we feel like running away, run to God. He will restore justice and goodness on the earth in his good time. And that's why the next verses in this uh, uh, poetry of David in this psalm recognizes that God seated on the throne is not just wasting time and sitting. He's watching over the sons and daughters of men and he will judge in the, the time appointed the righteous and the evil ones. And he says, the psalmist says, for the righteous, God loves them. God will protect them. God will guard them. God will see them through. But for the wicked, he hates them. He will even pour um, burning coal on their hearts and their heads. He will destroy and crush those who are wicked. So when we turn to him, and as nations look for no solutions elsewhere and turn back to God, God will love us. God will hear us with mercy. God will look upon us and say, here are my people crying out to me in repentance. I will protect them. I will rescue them. I will uh, bring them back. In the reading of Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 11, when Nehemiah heard that Jerusalem was in ruins, he did not turn to the king as the first solution or the first point of his eyes. He turned to God. He went to God in prayer. He ran to God. He prayed and fasted. He did not run away from the problem, but he went to the stable throne of the Father, reminding God of his promises. He told them, you know, God, when you promised Moses that uh, you are going to look after his people, when you said after crossing from uh, uh, Egypt to the promised land, you are going to watch over us, but you also made a declaration that if we lose focus of you, you are going to release us for exile, and that's why we are here. He began repenting his own sins, and the sins of the people of Israel and said, God, I and my family have sinned against you. The nation of Israel has sinned against you. Pardon us and make me an instrument to change the current situation. When he prayed and finished praying, he asked God to have, give him favor before the king. And indeed, the king began a conversation which led into him being given opportunity to go back to Israel and rebuild the ruins and the rubbles and bring back worship uh, in the land that God claimed to be his land. In the midst of this pandemic, God is calling us to run to him. Our security and our safety is in him, not in any other place. Our security, our safety is in God. You know the world has been looking for a solution. Doctors are telling us nothing is foreseen yet. Even in our own situation as a country, when we are told there are no beds in Nairobi, it is very scary. When the doctors are threatening that they can go on strike because they are not protected enough, they are not being paid enough, it scares the common person who is looking upon them for security and treatment. But let me say this. God is above our doctors and nurses, and I'm not diminishing them. They have done a great job. But God is our security and our safety, even in such a moment. I was so uplifted when I saw the Prime Minister of Italy, when the pandemic was so harsh, calling out a whole nation and say, I'm not truly a believer by excellence, 
But I want to ask the whole nation, we have tested science, we have tested medicine, we have tested technology, it has not given us a solution. Go to the street and prostrate and pray and seek God in earnest. And that nation declared that day, everybody went to the streets and prayed to their God, and the situation began to change in Italy. It is the same that we yearn for in Kenya, in Africa, in other places. The world is needing that moment when we can all realize that when the foundations are shaken, economic foundations, our faith foundation is being shaken, is being tested in a big way. Uh, the military power, technology is all being shaken by this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Where will we go? When the foundation is shaking, we must remember point number two, to remain faithful. To remain faithful. It is easy to give up on faith, hope, and integrity when going through a crisis. When Job was going through a tri uh, uh, tribulations in his life, his own wife suggested that he curses God so that he would die. But Job refused. He chose to remain faithful to his God. He said, I came with nothing, and with nothing I'll go back. I will never curse the name of the Lord. I'll better serve and serve trusting in him. Faithfulness is the ability and willingness to remain committed in spite of the happening around us. The fact that we are going through a pandemic does not mean that God has suspended his laws and statutes or suspended his love on us. That's why we normally sing that beautiful song. His love never runs out on us. His love never runs out on us. It does not mean because you are going through this, God has suspended his love on us, his care, his statutes. He still expects us to obey him and remain faithful. He still demands that uh, uh, we commit to faithfulness and do the right thing before him. Why? The psalmist was reminding us in Psalm 11, the Lord is on the throne watching over us, our actions and activities, and in due course he will judge us, both the righteous and uh, uh, the wicked, because he is a just, faithful God, and he requires us to remain committed and faithful, even in the midst of all this. In verse 5 of the psalmist, remind us, God does not shield believers from difficult circumstances, but examines and tests them, both the righteous and the wicked. For some, God's test becomes an incinerator for destruction. Don't ignore or defy the test and challenges that come your way. Use them as opportunities to turn back the more and deeper into faith and grow towards God's direction. This pandemic is an opportunity for us to be better, better Christians, better faithful servants of the Lord, better trusting in him, better walking after him and chasing after him. And this is what God declares after, uh, of man. He said, which heart is God yearning for? It is a contrite and a broken spirit. A person seeking and running after God. And he declares David as such, who is running after God. Even when he sins, he does not remain in that state of sin. He runs to God and asking him to forgive him. And uh, in uh, uh, total repentance, he is accepted time and again and again because he is always after God's own heart. Thirdly, when the foundations are shaking, we must remember to rebuild on the eternal foundation. We must remember that there is an eternal foundation. When the foundations are shaken, anything that is not built on the rock crumbles. However, whatever is built on sure foundation will stand the test and the trials. We must learn to rebuild our lives on the sure and eternal foundation. In Matthew 16, 13 to 20, we are reminded that Jesus Christ is a rock 
upon which the church is founded. You know, we normally confuse that confession of Peter. When Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, and Jesus says, on this rock I will build my church, we normally confuse Peter to be the rock. But it is not Peter the rock. It is not Peter the person. It is a confession that Peter makes, declaring that Jesus is the son of God. It is that declaration that Jesus is Lord that becomes the rock, the foundation of our faith, that Jesus is Lord. So when we declare him as Lord and Savior, then we are on the right rock. We are on the right foundation because he is the rock. Verse 18 tells us that the rock on which Jesus will build his church has been identified as Jesus himself, his works of salvation, by dying for us on the cross. We must always remember to build on the dependable foundation. Jesus Christ himself. The Apostle Paul reminds us that the church in Corinth for no other foundation can anyone lay other than the one which has already been laid Jesus Christ our Savior. So there is no other foundation because other foundations are shaky. It is only Jesus Christ the Son of God with the Father seated on the throne which is not shaken even when other foundations are shaking, is solid ground. The rock, Jesus Christ. In the midst of this pandemic, when the foundations are shaking, we must rebuild on the sure and eternal foundation, Jesus Christ. What are we going to rebuild? Our faith in him, our trust in him, our commitment to him, our following him, our seeking earnestly after him, running to him is what is required of us. When the foundations are shaking, remember as I conclude, run to the Father, the creator of the universe. When the foundations are shaking, remain faithful to the very end. When the foundations are shaking, rebuild on the eternal foundation. Let me illustrate a little bit as I conclude this sharing. The great architect Frank Lloyd Wright was given the challenge of building the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, one of the most earthquake-prone places in the world. It is one of the most uh, prone to earthquake city in the world. Right investigating, investigation showed that a solid foundation could be floated on a 60-foot layer of soft mud underlying the hotel, which will provide a shock-absorbing state, but solid support for the immense building. Shortly after the hotel was completed, to the dismay of many who are wondering, how can soft mud be the foundation of a very a hotel in a shaky earth point? which is prone to earthquake. But because he knew what he was meaning, he knew if he put on a solid thing, it can crack and crumble. He needed something that can absorb shock and even can withstand the twisting of the earthquake. So he did the hotel. And uh, the hotel was able to absorb shock. And in support uh, uh, of the immense building, Shortly after the hotel was completed, it withstood the worst earthquake in 52 years while lesser buildings fell in ruins around it. This story is taken from today in the word of March 1989, page 6. The big question is, is your life built on the solid, sure, and eternal foundation, Jesus Christ? This is a question for the church today. This is a question for every family today. This is a question for every individual today. This is a question for every nation today. This is a question for every institution today. Are we building on solid, sure, eternal foundation, Jesus Christ, our Savior?
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word that remind us when the ground and the foundations are shaking and are being destroyed, what shall we do? You gave the answer that uh, you remain solid and shaken and you sit on the throne watching over us. So Lord, the best we can do is to run to you. And that's why we are running to you, O oh Lord, as individuals, as families, as people of the church of today, whose faith has been shaken when this pandemic has disrupted normal life, shaken our faith, our trust in you. But Lord, we want to declare that our journey is a journey towards you. Lord, help us to run faster to where you sit so that we are secure on the solid foundation. Lord, we bless our nation, Kenya. We commit the leadership of this country, our president and all those who lead with him, that, Lord, they will always and ever turn to you and bring this nation towards your direction. It's our prayer that, Lord, you will lead your church, every church leader, to rally all the congregations and members to a journey towards yourself. For it is only when we find ourselves in your place, nothing can shake. Not even COVID-19 can shake our faith and our trust in you. So God, bless our souls, even as we reflect on your word, which you taught us this morning. Help us to internalize, help us to walk with it, and live it. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name. Amen. We appreciate and thank the Lord, your grace, for the, those wonderful words and for bringing God's word of encouragement to us, even in a season like this. And now we'd like to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. And those who are following us at home and those who are also present here and would love to give towards the work of God here at St. Francis and beyond, please use, feel free to use our pay bill number as given on the screens. Our pay bill number is 718436, 718436, and the account number, please indicate your name. And for those present here and came with your offering, uh, with the, following the guidelines given, please maintain social distance, but bring your tithes and offering uh, to the front. And we will be doing this as we sing the hymn, Sowing in the Morning, Sowing Seeds of Kindness. Sowing in the Morning, Sowing Seeds of Kindness. <laughs> Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing made of clouds, no winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Oh, 
sowing for the reaping, sowing for the master, though the Lord sustained our spirit often grieves. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, and bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Let us pray for the gifts. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do acknowledge that all good things come from thee. And for these that you have given your people and they have given back to you, we pray that you bless the works of their hands in accordance to thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the Christ himself, and God our Father who loved us and gave eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort our hearts and establish them in every good work and word. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Your grace, we have come to the end of this service. Thank you very much. I am reminded that we have a holiday Bible week for children. Those with children, please remember August 20 to 22nd. Uh, and our theme is Launching into the Deep. It is an online holiday Bible week for the children. So please register online. We continue with the online service and we continue to on the live service here, those ones who are able to come to church, please feel free to come. And uh, we have observed all the protocols. When we get out, please don't talk to anybody. That's a part of the protocol. Eh? When you get out of church, you get into your cars, and off. Oh, we need to clear the compound as fast as possible. So please, let's, let's not have, you know, in a gathering out there. And I believe as we continue, the Lord will bless us together. Our recession of him is with the anchor hold. <laughs> And show while the billows roll, fast and to the rock which cannot move, grounded for and deep in the Savior's love. Will your anchor hold in the straits of fear when the breakers roar and the reef is near? While the surges rave and the wild winds blow and 
the angry waves in your bark flow. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Cahold in the floods of death, when the waters cold till your latest breath, when the rising tide you can never fail, while your anchor holds within the pain. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Will your eyes behold through the morning light the city of gold and the harbour bright? Will you anchor safe by the heavenly shore when life's storms are past forever? Oh, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love.